I'm Jan Korblin. I've um, been in the media industry for quite a while, producing films from uh, Crash to Alpha Dog, uh, TV shows, and children's animation. Um, Michael asked me to give a little bit of a background on the movie industry. So I'll just walk you uh, kind of on a 10,000 feet uh, overview. Uh, let me see, uh, share the screen. So just like uh, pretty much every industry in the world, uh, you know, the digital disruption uh, in the movie industry and in the media industry is in full swing. Uh, you've already seen the effects with uh, the likes of uh, Netflix and other streamers. Um, Let's start with the film industry. Here's a, a little bit of a graph as to how many uh, movies have been released in the U.S. cinemas from 1980 to 2020. It's been steadily increasing. You can see the drop off. Uh, that's a COVID uh, related 2020, uh, where uh, it basically was half from the peak of over 800 movies a year. These are movies, uh, not movies that have been produced, but movies that actually have had some kind of release in the theaters. Uh, so, you know, the production of movies is much, much higher, but only a certain amount of uh, movies find their way into theaters. Um, you know, theatrical release is still, still seen as the crown achievement uh, of movie making. Although, uh, as you know, that is also changing pretty dramatically with the streamers. This is a relation, uh, you know, of the tickets sold with uh, regard to box office. Again, you see, can see the COVID uh, drop off. Um, so even though box office has increased uh, over over time, the amount of tickets sold have in, uh, decreased, which uh, showing that uh, you know movie attendance generally has been down, and you know the increase in box office has only been achievable through the rise of uh, the price of tickets. Now you know this uh, is also really de dependent on demographics. Hispanics, for example, are extremely high moviegoers. Uh, white uh, is going less so. African Americans are just roughly in the middle. Um, but it uh, is a question then. You know, is the theatrical experience still uh, uh, what people expect and uh, what they're what they're paying for? Particularly when you now have content at your fingertips of all kinds through all the streamers or video on demand. You can see the global uh, box office, uh, also in relationship of uh, you know the U.S. Uh, box office, which is the darker uh, shaded uh, blocks. Uh, it's the just a just a movie industry is a forty-two uh, billion dollar industry globally. Uh, again, to COVID, that has been you know reduced to almost a fourth. Um, you know, and this has also had major other impacts of how people are watching movies and uh, what the future might hold. Uh, so right now there's a lot of debate uh, as to what the theatrical experience will be, how will movies be released in the future, and so on and so forth. We'll get that to that a little bit later. Uh, in the U.S., the major uh, uh, distributor of movies uh, over the last years and also in 2021, as you can see, uh, has been Disney, uh, followed by Universal, Warner Brothers, Paramount, uh, Sony, Lionsgate, and MGM. Disney is a prolific force. Uh, in all areas uh, of entertainment and, uh, you know, through the franchises like Star Wars and Marvel, Pixar and so on and so forth, they've been really been able to use the marketing machine to uh, <clears throat> really, really drive theatrical release and attendance. Um, here you can see a really interesting situation as to how now the share of uh, the entertainment market of theatrical versus physical, which is still videos, actually videos or, or, or DVDs, and then digital, uh, you know, has has gone. The U.S. is obviously slightly higher than the other world, uh, but uh, it's it's clear that digital has won all the way and all across. So most of the entertainment market is now seen on the digital platforms. Uh, I'll go back to the general entertainment market, but let me explain a little bit how movies make money. Um, uh, the film industry is in flux, in, and ticket prices alone don't derive, uh, uh, don't make all the revenue. And movies are really, when they're really theatrically released, uh, uh, they're kind of uh, 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 often lost leaders, but they drive the whole entertainment side because there's a whole chain of subsequent licensing um, through TV, through video, video on demand, and then the streamers. So, uh, you know, if you have a high awareness of a movie theatrical you and, and a high attendance, you value, obviously, of selling the license then to a, a TV broadcaster, to a streamer, and so on and so forth goes up. So the way, uh, you know, obviously, if it's more brand aware, if you have a franchise like Harry Potter as books, that makes it easier to, you know, uh, uh, push the movie out. If it's a small independent movie without you know a big brand behind it, it's a little harder. But generally, 
um, you know, the, the way uh, movies make their money is through to the ticket price revenue. Um, that is actually shared with the theater owners. Generally, uh, it's around 50 to 60% going to the studio uh, on then 40% to the theater owner. Um, you know, it depends obviously on the power they have. Disney might get a little bit more of that share. Um, others might get a little less uh, merchandising. Obviously that doesn't work for any, every film, but generally for the really wide release films. This is all started with, uh, with Star Wars and George Lucas um, and, uh, you know, has been very successful on, you know, films that have kind of a brand that is merchandisable, where you can create products around it from t-shirts to toys and so on and so forth. Um, the foreign sales, uh, in order to actually finance a movie, uh, uh, often territories are pre-sold. Um, this is seen from the U.S. perspective. So, you know, the major territories are uh, territories like Japan, Germany, France, Spain, uh, the U.K., Australia, um, uh, obviously China, although China has a lot of restrictions still on what kind of movies will make it to the market. Um, and then the foreign sales kind of generally are being more used by independent uh, filmmakers so that they can actually finance their movie. And then, you know, once it's gone through the theatrical, uh, it basically uh, goes, uh, you know, into the into a television, into a chain um, uh, where it goes from television. That's, that's called windowing on television and streaming VOD. Uh, I will show you that in a second as well. How are movies financed? Uh, obviously, there's always a lot of sources. A studio basically generally finds it fully itself. Uh, Disney will just pay for the entire uh, budget and cost. Uh, they've also worked together with film funds who raise money from private equity, and then they basically share in the profits. But uh, besides that, you know, it's obviously private equity, but also tax breaks are used. So many countries, many regions of, offer tax breaks for you to film uh, in, uh, in that location. Um, for example, in Canada, in certain areas, you get up to 40% of your labor cost back of what you spend in that area. So let's say if you, you know, do a $10 million movie, let's say, I don't know, 8 million of that is, uh, is labor costs, then, you know, the, the, the government will give you back about uh, between two and $4 million. So that makes a big difference on financing a movie, particularly when, you know, you can get the whole budget financed. Uh, then again, pre-sales uh, for distribution rights and then revenue from product placement. So if Mercedes uh, places a car in Jurassic Park, they pay uh, the studio, the producer for that. Uh, the costs uh, are obviously not along the production cost. The production cost, obviously, what it costs to make the movie, which is uh, above the line and below the line. Above the line is actors, uh, directors, development, uh, producers, and so on and so forth. Also, all the above ta the line talent and then below the line is all the people that uh, you know work more hands-on on the production in you know specific areas uh, like the cameraman, uh, uh, you know the, the the designer, locations, uh, food costs, film costs, cameras, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's the cost of you know the budget of the movie that you have to make you know, that you need to make it. But then in order to actually get there, you have to develop the movie, you have to develop the script, you have to uh, pay a writer. Uh, that can take a long time. You know, sometimes it takes uh, a long, long time to get a movie from development to production. Um, you know, sometimes some movies have taken 10 years or, or longer to actually make it. Um, then you obviously as a producer, then you have the marketing and promotion side, which uh, can become very, very expensive. Uh, and one of the major hurdles to releasing a movie is that uh, you know, the, the marketing promotion uh, and then, you know, the advertising, what they call prints and advertising can be often uh, as high, if not higher than the budget of a movie. So let's say if you have a smaller movie at $50 million, uh, then the, the P&A uh, cost, the print and advertising cost can be 20, 30, 40 million dollars to actually cut through the clutter uh, and for the theatrical owners to actually, you know, push it through uh, in the theatrical release. So uh, those are all additional costs. So, you know, when you have, let's say, Marvel comic uh, uh, film like the Avengers, which costs maybe 200, 220 million dollars, uh, obviously Disney has a lot of power, but then, you know, normally there would be another 100 million or so in, in, in prints and advertising. So, you know, you have to recoup all that money to actually make profit. Uh, this is the traditional exploitation uh, um, uh, chain, which I talked about, you know, so you have theatrical, you know, that goes, that was traditionally zero to three months. After that, it went to home video. They had six months to exploit it. Then it went to premium TV. 
they had uh, you know about a year plus uh, to expose it, exploit it. Then it went to basic. So basically, premium TV would be HBO, Showtime, and so on and so forth. And then it would go to general broadcasters, uh, and everybody would pay. So uh, you know the big money then probably would would also come through this chain of exploitation. This is actually through the digital revolution has been completely. Uh, messed up uh, and you know this kind of traditional way of, of windowing uh, is breaking down and is creating a lot of discussions. How does this fit in the wider uh, movie and uh, media universe? Uh, when you look at it you know in the 50s 60s we had three networks in the US and this was pretty much the same everywhere in the world it doesn't matter if it's France or Germany uh, and so on and so forth. Um, you know, then uh, with the advent of cable more uh, channels could be launched and reach people uh, uh, then the multiple video uh, programming distributors uh, uh, increased that even more. And then once streaming digital hit in the 2010s, uh, it just really exploded. And in the last 10 years, uh, there have been more channels uh, going uh, online than in the previous time um, amount so to the point where you now have thousands of channels uh, that are streaming through, you know, either directly or through, you know, channels like Peacock or Pluto TV and so on and so forth. So. It's a dramatic explosion of distribution channels, which you know, obviously in turn all uh, need content. Um, this is a, a graphic on the US pay TV online subscription. So again, you can see how digital has just been you know, exploding while um, you know, all the other uh, channels have really been either stable or declined. Uh, cable, satellite, and so on, having huge problems. You've, you've had the issues of People cutting the cord and then buying, you know, the subscription of Netflix, Disney Plus, Hulu, and so on and so forth. Um, this is uh, the media landscape in the U.S. right now. Uh, it's a pretty dramatic uh, shift, as you can imagine. You know, with the new big boys streaming in, which is, uh, you know, Netflix. Uh, there's a lot of consolidation in the market with AT&T buying uh, Warner Media. You know, Disney obviously pushing very, very hard with Disney Plus. That was a huge success for them. Um, uh, Comcast uh, trying to build and so on and so forth. But the, the real, real big threat to the traditional movie industry is, uh, you know, Apple, Amazon, uh, Google, and Facebook as big digital giants that have been vertically, vertically integrating and been very, very successful in, in, in pushing there as well. Uh, so in, in a weird way, we've started out with six studios that dominated the landscape. And now we're going to have about six big media tech companies that are going to be do dominating the landscape. Uh, this is uh, this shows how this has gone. You know, when you look at the market capitalization in in 2015 versus right now, uh, sorry, this, this should be 2021. Uh, you know, Apple almost tripled its media uh, its capitalization. Google uh, same. Amazon, uh, the only one that's up there in the top four or five is ATT Time Warner, and they made it through. You know, basically combining two entities, uh, which. It's causing a lot of troubles, though, because the cultures are so different uh, between, you know, the HBOs of that world and, and the ATT of the world. Uh, Disney has uh, been able to increase its value, although not as much as the tech companies, which is surprising because they uh, are now really also a tech company in many ways through the streaming. They've really uh, gone full in on streaming and uh, they basically now uh, are one of the major competitors in the digital, the digital side as well. And then obviously they have the theme parks and everything else. So. Um, that is, in, in, in a way, compared to tech, uh, undervalued, but uh, we will see what happens there. And then, uh, obviously, you have Netflix, you have uh, Comcast, and then, you know, if you have Viacom, CBS, and Fox, who have actually declined in value, um, they basically have the value uh, in many ways, despite, uh, you know, merging and so on and so forth. So you can see that, you know, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the traditional tech is actually starting to become so big that they can dominate in media. Um, you can see the the reach of the major uh, streaming services. Netflix obviously has had a huge leg up, uh, uh, but Prime Video is following very quickly in its tails. They're buying up a lot of rights, but also in sports and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, they are really uh, very, very strong. Interestingly enough, Hulu has been doing really, really well, and that's been extremely good for Disney, who now owns the majority of Hulu, uh, which is part of what they got when they bought Fox. And then Disney Plus, uh, they are selling obviously Hulu, Disney Plus, and ESPN Plus also in in, in bundles. Uh, and you have HBO Max, uh, Apple, and so on and so forth. So you know the wars are really in the streaming uh, side, called streaming wars. Uh, 
this these are mostly here subscription but then you also have what they call the fast channels which is um the advertising supported television channels that are being streamed digitally and uh they've been also growing very very quickly uh even superseding what what you you have in cable so all these advertising supported channels that are drive, drive driven with content are also you know out there pluto tv is is one example of how uh, these uh, you know reach the customer but roku peacock and so on and so forth are also they're all trying to kind of get as many uh, content uh, channels as possible on their platforms um the content is king you know movies is obviously the king category but uh, uh don't forget that there's all this other kind of content the tv movies series reality shows documentaries even educational videos and all of this has really really exploded when you look at it uh, you know, it's been very, very hard for others to keep up, but the content spend of like the new guys, Netflix, Prime uh, Video, TV, uh, Apple Plus and Hulu is uh, exploded pretty dramatically from when you can look at 2015 to 2019, um, you know, $15 billion, uh, that, that is a, an un, unspeakable kind of sum. Uh, and everybody else is trying to catch up. Um, you can see that, uh, now you have also Disney uh, really, really putting in a lot of money. But you know, this is not just on streaming content. You know, Disney would also have you know all the uh, 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 theatrical content and television content as well. So for that reason, they, you know, in, in combined, uh, you know, then also with ESPN and Hulu, they actually exceeding some of the other uh, companies that are investing uh, in movie. But it's uh, it's an incredible amount of money that's going right now into content. Uh, I think that that is going to change at some point as the market consolidates because nobody can keep spending this amount of money and there's so much content out there, um, you know, that uh, uh, people are starting to have a hard time uh, finding things. Uh, this is a quick graphic again shows you how the digital you know, video on demand has been exploding. Um, and this is uh, uh, an interesting uh, inqu inquiry where they checked as to where would like would people like to watch new movie releases. And this is where the whole uh, exploitation chain is being disrupted. So theater is only 13%, uh, probably a theater 22%, but then it goes very, very quickly uh, to equally likely a theater at home, probably at home or at home. So the majority of people already are accustomed to say, look, I don't even need to go to a theater. I will, I will actually watch this at home, uh, either on my home entertainment center or even on my iPad or even my phone, iPhone when I have nothing else. So that is uh, really deeply impacting, uh, uh, you know, the, the the release way. So that you can see that <clears throat> people are now trying experimenting with uh, with releases. You know, Netflix obviously is making movies that are costing hundred million dollars and putting them right on the service. It's all included in the subscription, a subscription which they have uh, raised now three, four, five times in the last year. So it's gone, you know, up. I think it's a thirteen ninety nine right now, gone up from like nine ninety nine. Disney's starting to raise their prices. Uh, Disney, uh, 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 HBO Max also, uh, you know, due to COVID said, look, we're going to release our whole slate of movies that we're going to theatrically, we're going to release them on HBO Max uh, to really, really drive uh, engagement and new customers and so on and so forth. That's worked quite well for them, although initially the talent was very, very pissed and upset that uh, they didn't get a theatrical release. That is one thing because, you know, your, your exposure is a different one. Uh, they feel, you know, it's, it's, it's more high, you know, higher on the chain, but also because a lot of the deals that they have are related to box office uh, uh, revenue. And so they have profit shares. So uh, HBO Max solved that fairly quickly by dealing with them, paying money out to them and so on and so forth. Um, Disney went a different way. Disney uh, actually put on some releases uh, as part of the subscription on Disney Plus. Other releases like Jungle Cruise, for example, um, or, um, you know, Cruella and so on initially cost $30 on top of the subscription to be able to watch uh, uh, initially. Um, and, um, you know, uh, again, that's causing a lot of disruption. Some people just decide we're going to wait until it's for free. Uh, a lot of the talent got very, very upset again because, uh, you know, their share in the theatrical box office was not accounted. You know, the most famous uh, uh, situation was right now uh, Black Widow, uh, uh, you know, where there was a lawsuit against Disney that just got settled. Uh, so it's a lot of disruption into, you know, how am I going to release my movie, theatric first, do I do it to a streaming video uh, service, how does this affect the talent, how does this affect costs, and so on and so forth. But obviously the, the direct-to-consumer model that uh, the media industry is now also writing is, uh, uh, is, is paramount, there's just no way around it. And people are fighting it from, uh, you know, George Lucas to others to say, look, we can't, or Steven Spielberg, you know, we have to 
continue uh, re releasing theatrical movies. And I think that, you know, just like uh, the theater, uh, when movies started, it just gets a smaller share of, of the pie. Theatrical will always be there, mostly for big movies, but everything else is just going to move on the services and you're going you're gonna to pay either uh, for it as part of a subscription or in some way in a premium form. So where is this all going? Uh, you know, obviously the effects of COVID has uh, dramatically changed the way uh, people are consuming media. Uh, subscriptions have doubled or tripled for some services. Uh, and there's no, no going back. People are, you know, now so accustomed to watching this uh, at home that, uh, you know, it's changing the entire way how movies are exploited. exploited. You know, they, they, the whole uh, uh, change is really going from re uh, revenue per window, i.e., you know, I'm licensing and going theatrical, then I license to TV, then I license to video on demand, so on and so forth. It's going to directly revenue per user. So uh, just like you would buy a, a T-shirt or pants or an Apple phone, I'm just going to go, I buy, I have a direct relationship with the, with the studio in this case, I pay for it. They basically get all the benefits directly. On top of it, they get the data because they understand more and more what people are watching, what they should invest in. And uh, it's an interesting development. I'm not quite sure if it's uh, you know ultimately ideal uh, because it might actually limit variety in certain ways. You know, it just gets everything gets more and more homogeneous in some ways. Uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, the, the the industry will change. A lot of these costs, uh, as they're exploding, have to be contained. So. Uh, people will produce less content. Uh, pe people, you know, will uh, pay less for content. So, uh, you know, this this will continue going on for two, three years as everybody's trying to position, gain market share. But at some point, the party will be over and, and things will be kind of consolidated. Uh, you see that already uh, in the consolidation of the major media players like Time Warner and AT and T. Uh, now they buying Discovery, emerging with Discovery. Uh, uh, you know, Amazon buying MGM and so on and so forth. Uh, it's all part of this whole consolidation process. The whole idea of convergence that it's ultimately really doesn't matter anymore to where you watch it. You just you just have to have it at your fingertips. Not, it depends on you know, how you feel. Do you want to go theatrical? Do you want to watch it at home on a big screen? Do you want to watch it on your TV? Uh, do you want to watch it on your iPhone? Uh, I want to have it, you know, in my fingertips and it really doesn't matter how I see it. I just have to be able to access how I want it. We talked about the cost pressure. Um, I think there are going to be a lot of need, new needs for, uh, forms for financing because as this uh, model of theatrical, uh, uh, you know, then TV, video on demand, and so on, model is, is is dramatically disrupted. You know, people are trying to figure out well how we're financing our movies if we don't, if we cannot charge char charge for every stage, but rather once. Obviously, you know, forms like uh, Indiegogo and Kickstarter crowdfunding, you know, have have tried to do that. Although that just kind of happens with smaller movies or really short films. Um, you know, so that that might there's I think uh, people are starting to talk about how token uh, or, or 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 cryptocurrency can be used to finance films. I think that that is going is going to be an incredibly interesting and, and viable uh, viable way. So this could be a really interesting place for unit to to claim a stake. Um, the distribution forms will be hybrid. It will be basically based on the content and you know how people feel that it's going to be received. So they could just do theatrical and then the line. They could just go on directly on streamer, or they could do a premium payment on a streamer. Uh, everything everything is go right now. People are obviously experimenting a lot with it right now, but but I think everything will uh, you know everything can be tried out and and, and people will go with what works. Um, for the platforms, I think there's going to be some kind of breakdown at some point for thematical and, and social uh, kind of uh, uh, communities, you know, community viewing. Uh, uh, there are some discussions right now that, you know, the Netflixes of this world are at some point going to be replaced by uh, community AI driven uh, uh, platforms where movies are shared based on interest. Um, and that could be really interesting. So basically, it's kind of the social network of movie watching. People watch either together or alone, but they all watch because they have similar in interests, you know, sci-fi, uh, romantic stories, comedies. Um, you can see that a little bit uh, in, in a nation form with Crunchyroll, which is all about manga. They've been very, very successful in taking thematic and, and social uh, 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 to, to, you know, to, become, to become successful and that they're doing quite well. The other differentiation, obviously, is local versus global. Some some movies will not uh, work internationally; others will. Uh, China still has a hard time exporting its movies, while the U.S. never has had that problem. Uh, but you know, a lot of European movies are now making the world, or you know, the, the global round and selling quite well. 
Um, and then the last area is obviously, you know, what do you shoot, shoot to advertising uh, supported platforms and what is more subscription based. So that is kind of a general overview in, in the short amount of time that we have to, uh, to go over this uh, to see, but you can see that there's huge uh, amount of disruption and that, uh, uh, you know, the token and crypto uh, economy uh, put, has a, is probably a pretty big place here in helping support, uh, you know, movie making and movie distribution particularly as uh, cost pressures will come down from the large, you know, the large companies like Netflix and Disney, um, you know, and, and particularly as things are consolidated into, you know, all these large movies and you want the variety, uh, particularly in the, in the independent world where a lot of interesting movies like, uh, you know, movie I produce Crash or Little Miss Sunshine and so on and so forth are, are, are being done. They will need uh, new sources of financing and cryptocurrency and tokens uh, seem to be a really interesting way.